your three key tips to start for booking an aeroplan mileage reward. Number one, being flexible with the dates and times that you fly and also the airports you fly into. Number two, trying to avoid the different fuel surcharges by, again, being flexible and using the different airlines that have regulations against flying um, charging sur surcharges. And number three, using the fixed mileage rates instead of the uh, market fare, which is going to save you the most and give you the most best value and bang for your buck. What's up guys? A video here on putting together your best sort of aeroplan um, points booking for your flights. Uh, we get a lot of questions. People ask how we use our points and how best to maximize them. And we wanted to talk a little bit about how to use them, but then also how to avoid most of the fuel surcharges because we're looking at booking flights for the next summer. Um, nice and early and we've got a few different options and the price differences are significant for like the taxes that you have to pay on top. So one of the first things you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go to Aeroplan's website um, and then you're going to have to log in. Once you're logged in you're going to go to the book travel flights and then from there we're going to look at our flight options. So if you do a one-way a one, -way, a one -way option you can actually look at um, single flights and based on the amount of points it takes. If you do a round trip, it'll take sort of a lump amount, let's say 100,000. If you do a multi-city, it's going to take the exact same amount of points as a, as a round trip. So we always try and do a multi-city when we can. Bring a multi-city. We're leaving from Vancouver and we are going to, what we're looking at right now is going to Dubai leaving on June 29th. 29th and then we we're going to go Dubai to originally we we're looking at Vienna actually we're going to start with Dubai we're going to go Dubai to Warsaw and then Warsaw to Vancouver and the date we're going to Warsaw is what, July 8th, one day after that. Is. One day after that. And coming home as late Obviously as we can. We have the 12th or something, but take a look. Two passengers. We always like to try and book business class if we can. Um, that's because with economy, it's going to take, let's say, 67% of the points that business class takes. So if you book business class for 100,000, it's gonna probably cost you 70,000 on economy class. So the value you're getting out of the business class seats is so much higher because they're much more expensive tickets. And we always enjoy flying business class when we can. Why not? So we're searching. So our first flight, we've already got, kind of gone through this a little bit. Our first flight that we're looking at is uh, Vancouver to London, London to Cairo, Cairo to Dubai. Now one thing to watch here, and one of the reasons we want to film this video, is because um, the taxes can be significantly different whether you're flying on Air Canada versus another airline that regulates the, um, the actual fuel surcharges. So another website we have here, um, the Prince of Travel, who's from Toronto, and he's a, basically like a travel blogger, um, goes over some of the different countries that do have regulations on, on fuel surcharges and taxes and whatnot, and the way, way to save uh, a little bit of money on the taxes. Um, this is our, basically our best option. We have to fly Air Canada. We actually really like flying Air Canada. It's just they can be very expensive. So that's the first one we're going to pick on the way out. Uh, the next flight we're looking at here. Um, let's see. Okay, sorry. I had to make a quick little adjustment on the dates. I had the wrong date in there. Um, but you've got a couple different flight options here for that next day. Uh, we're going to go with. We've got the up, to, up top here, we've got Turkish Airlines and, and Polish Airlines, and below we have Egypt Air and and, uh, uh, and Polish Airlines. We're going to actually go with Egypt Air because they they monitor and, and, and try and minimize the taxes, whereas Turkish Airlines charges quite a bit more in taxes. I'm actually having a bit of difficulty pulling up the flights that I was just looking at before I started filming this video, which brings another point up that um, often you have to clear your browser's history and your cookies because sometimes it'll store that and at least on airline websites, not always on Aeroplan, but on airline websites, they'll know what you've been looking at over the previous days and sometimes won't drop the price because they've been monitoring what you've been watching. So clearing your browser history so there's no record of what you've been looking at really helps you sort of get to that 
um, like fresh search. So always make sure you clear your browser history, um, which is sort of what we're fighting with right now here, trying to figure out what the best option is. Um, okay, so as an example here, one of our first options, um, to one of our options to fly back is using this Polish Airlines flight that you can fly for nine, 10 hours basically on Polish Airlines and then just a short Air, Air Canada flight um, from Chicago to Vancouver and all on business class. That, points wise, keep in mind this is for two people, so it's 165,000 miles each, um, is only $1,800, so $900 each in total taxes, which is still very high, but it's $900 each. If we pick different dates altogether and fly the long haul flight on Air Canada, instead of on Polish Airlines, who monitors their um, their taxes and fees, we will pay substantially more. So we'll pick the exact same outbound flights. And then we'll pick a different one here, let's say, that goes Polish and Air Canada for the long haul part. 2,800 mile, uh, dollars now. So the same amount of miles always, but 2,800, almost 2,900 Canadian. So now we're talking we just increased by a thousand dollars, so five hundred dollars each more, just to go on our Canada version instead of the Polish Airlines. It's really important to be able to monitor which actual airline you're flying, um, and just kind of play around with it. Obviously, a good step is just to take the time to play with it. So, just going and looking at every different option um, that makes a big difference. Um, just kind of analyzing all the different routings you can take and all the different um, the different dates you can fly on uh, and whatnot. That just sort of helps you figure it out um, and spend a little bit of time sort of finding the best deals. Uh, and then past that, the other thing you can also do is you can use miles to pay for the, the dollar value as well. You have to pay at the end, but that's not usually worth it. I'd save the miles for flights themselves. What Market Fair is, is basically a opens up a lot more availability for flight options. So you can see a lot more flights, but you're paying significantly more per flight to be able to get that round trip business class. So you'll pay a lot more in miles, but you'll get a lot more availability on the calendar. So there might be like blackout dates or dates where you can't find business class whatsoever. Um, those are often f available uh, with the Market Fair kind of funny because right now the market fair is not working at all for me. Uh, but generally, basically, you can go through the exact same list and it'll give you a different market fair, uh, a number of points for each different flight, and then you can basically decide from each different flight which one you want to use um, based on the amount of miles. And obviously, better flight times and whatnot are using higher value. So like if you flew over Christmas time, um, flying right around for those Christmas dates is going to cost a lot more points than it would be in a lower time. So they, they base it based on the market. So the, de the demand changes the amount of points it takes. Uh, more availability, more points. So we always try and stick with the fixed mileage rewards just because those are the best bang for your buck. But then you just have to play with the dates, the routing, um, and obviously the airlines if you're trying to save the airline taxes. So that's our biggest tip for Aeroplan bookings. Um, number one, flexibility. Number two, playing with the dates and the airlines to avoid uh, fuel surcharges. Um, and number three, sticking with the fixed mileage rate. And that's sort of your best value out of all the Aeroplan bookings. We'll have some more videos to come on this, but this is just a start to give you a little bit of a feedback on what we're going through right now, just trying to book our next flight, to give you guys a bit of an idea of how we go through, strategize, and try and figure out where we want to go. Sometimes our flights and where we go is dependent on what we can find in the points, um, but this year we're looking at doing Dubai and Europe for next summer. We'll see you guys in the next one. It's funny because in the end, after booking all of this and going through all the footage, uh, a couple days later, we ended up actually booking the trip and we switched our routing around. So now we actually go into Abu Dhabi and then we're also going to Warsaw. Um, we're flying a little more on Egypt Air for the long haul and then also the Polish Airlines and Turkish Airlines, um, which have still higher, still high um, fees, but not as high as Air Canada. So there's different tiers basically for different airlines in different countries. Um, and we saved another several, several hundred dollars on top of that. Um, so we're paying less than half of what they was originally quoting when we were going through Vienna where they wanted like $3,000 for two people in taxes alone. Um, so just trying to avoid those airlines and those routings is the best way to do it. There are a number of websites um, like the Prince of Travel, and, you know, Points Guy and whatnot that you can go through and that's the best bet if you want to really learn a lot more about it because there's so many different little tips and tricks 
that you can use to try and avoid um, with like open jaw trips and whatnot. Um, flying places in like Asia have a lot of regulations on their, their fuel surcharges so they can't charge as much. Europe's a little bit tougher, um, but there are a few areas like in Scandinavian airlines going into Dublin, um, different cities and countries and airlines that, that can give you a lot of benefits. Um, so for example, we're flying, we're using with Dubai and, and, um, e and Europe, we're flying a lot of Polish airlines, Egypt Air, um, and then even Turkish Airlines. And then we do still have some Air Canada legs, um, but it's kept the taxes down quite a bit and we've saved over half, um, well over $1,500 just in the taxes alone, which is huge because that can cover all of our internal flights basically for the rest of the summer. Um, so just a little bit of research, a little bit of playing around with your dates and being flexible on the flights, uh, it makes a huge difference. You're also gonna wanna book really early because the earlier you book, the more options you have. The more last minute you book, the more you'll end up with market fare um, and have to play around with a little bit of the more restrictive and higher cost points. We'll see you guys in the next one. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to subscribe up here. Check out our most recent other videos over here or subscribe to our other channel over here.